Welcome to the Nicholas 11X12 technology. Today we're looking at the MSI Z170A gaming M5 motherboard for Intel's new Skylake CPUs. This is a totally new platform we're looking at, including a new chipset, processor, CPU socket, DDR4 RAM and so on. First I'll do the main review of this M5 board and then afterwards a separate overclocking video with this board and the i7-6700K processor. As you may know I've already tested the gaming M7 from MSI, which did extremely well in my review and even deserved my rare gold award. We'll see how this M5 does today. It currently costs around 180 to 195 US dollars, which is quite a bit less than the M7. A competitive price point I'd say compared to other manufacturers. At this point I'd like to thank MSI so much for sending me this interesting motherboard and therefore making this review and surely several others possible. <music> Inside a beautifully designed box is the motherboard itself, the manual, quick installation guide, the driver CD, thank you note from MSI with registration, the nicely padded red and black IO shield, 4 SATA cables, SATA cable labels, NS SLI bridge, the cool case badge and last but not least the popular door hanger. Aesthetically this MSI Z170A gaming M5 is no other than the M7, it's just plain beautiful without getting too messy in terms of the design. Everything looks well laid out, organized and professional, which is very appealing to gamers as well as enthusiasts like myself. The PCB is matte black and the color scheme of red and black of course is MSI's strong gaming color we all know by now. The design is very similar to the M7 I've tested, just a bit less details and stuff on this board, such as the missing IO cover for instance. I really like that paint finish on here as well, although the VRM heatsinks don't appear to be as metallic looking as the ones on the M7. So let's get started. The gaming M5 features the current flagship chipset model Z170 by Intel. The PCH heatsink is large and looks great. The two VRM heatsinks in the CPU socket area look good as well, are not connected with the heat pipe though. The M5 features a 12-phase VRM power design to ensure good stable power delivery and overclockability. MSI also has introduced a new quality standard that is military class 5, featuring dark and high C caps as well as the brand new titanium chokes. On this board we find the LJ1155 socket for Intel's latest Skylake processors. 4 DDR4 memory dims with support for dual channel XMP, capacities of up to 64GB as well as frequencies ranging from 2133MHz to 3006 600 MHz at OC. A red LED light will light up as soon as XMP is enabled. The DDR4 boost is a neat feature by MSI which basically fully isolates the memory circuitry from the rest of the board to enhance RAM stability. Aesthetically that's a cool bonus here as well. As for storage, we have a total of 6 SATA 6 gigabit per second ports here, 4 of which are reserved for the 2 SATA Express ports. RAID 0, 1, 5 and 10 are supported. Interestingly, even the M5 features 2 M.2 slots, supporting SATA 6 gigabit per second PCIe 3.0 X4 standards, as well as PCIe 3.0 X4 NVMe mini SAS SSD with a Turbo U.2 host card. Such a card is not included though. RAID 0 and 1 are supported for M.2 PCIe storage devices and module length of 4.0 2, 6 and 8 centimeters. All these M.2 and SATA ports run off the Intel Z170 chipset. Certain combinations of storage devices will however lead to some ports becoming unavailable. I'll not bother explaining it to you since I'd clearly confuse you there. Instead take a look at the images with examples. Looks complex at first but it really isn't. Expansion slots, 3 PCIe 3.0 x16 as well as 4 PCIe 3.0 x1 slots, 3-way crossfire and 2-way SLI supported here. For a single graphics card make sure to use the first slot to run at a full bandwidth of x16. For 2-way use the first and second one for x8 x8. And for a 3-way configuration obviously use all 3 available slots for x8 x8 x4 operation. Keep in mind that the third x16 slot will only run in x1 mode when an extension card is installed into the second, third or fourth x1 slot. A special feature here by MSI is the new so-called steel armor on the first two PCI Express x16 slots. The metal should strengthen the slots to prevent damage that can be caused by heavy GPUs. Looks nice too. Same as on the M7, this M5 also features 
features MSI's Audio Boost 3 audio solution with the Realtek LC 1150 8 channel 7.1 HD audio codec. For optimum performance, it's all EMI shielded and isolated from the rest of the board to avoid interference. That's nice and looks really cool in terms of aesthetics as well. On board are audio filtering Chemicon capacitors and even dual headphone amps. As for LAN, MSI goes with the very good killer E2400 gigabit LAN controller, even featuring anti surge protection. In total, this M5 has 5 fan headers, 2 for the CPU and 3 system fan headers all across the board. Down here, the JSPI1 header along with the 2 front panel headers, 2 USB 2.0 headers, a COM header also known as serial port, a TPM header, a JTBT1 header, I'm sorry I don't know the use for that one, and more on the left the front panel HD audio header. On the side a nice angled USB 3.1 Gen 1 or 3.0 header. Beside the 24 pin ATX power connection as well as the 8 pin ATX 12 volt power connection up there. The Z170A Gaming M5 luckily also comes with voltage checkpoints, small ones though. Down there a debugging LED which will display the CPU temperature after the post process. Unlike the M7, this M5 does not come with onboard power reset buttons and the Game Boost style. Game Boost is available in the BIOS though. The slow mode booting switch however makes its appearance on this M5 too, which boots the system at a stable CPU clock speed, preventing the system from crashing when under extreme overclocking conditions. Very noticeable is the use of high quality components all over the board. Well that's what military class 5 is all about, even featuring humidity, high temperature, circuit, over voltage, ESD, as well as EMI protections. At the back panel we find one PS2 combo port, two USB 2.0 ports, one DVI out, one USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type C, as well as an USB 3.1 Type A port, two USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports, so basically 3.0, and one HDMI output, one gigabit LAN, two more USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports, an optical SPDIF output, and last but not least, the five audio jacks. Just so you know, USB 3.1 Gen 2 is twice as fast as Gen 1, or 3.0 basically. The new click bias 5 UEFI bias by MSI is great. It comes with a refreshed design and a very nice user friendly user interface. We get the option to switch between an easy mode and an advanced one for more options. The bias responds fast and I like having everything nicely organized and categorized and that's exactly the case with MSI's click bias. Aspects that especially stand out are the hardware monitor and the board explorer. The MSI Z170A Gaming M5 is a fantastic motherboard overall. First of all it looks great which of course as all Always is a matter of taste, it remains perfectly stable, good for overclocking, the layout is done right, the onboard audio solution is very impressive, especially with the use of the Nahimic software, the UEFI bias is that easy to use and its response is flawless and of course this board offers tons of storage connectivity and possibilities in general. However the M7 I've tested comes with a bit more features overall. This M5 lacks special ones such as the onboard power reset buttons and the Game Boost style, the flashback plus USB port and button and there's also no DisplayPort video output at the back panel. But MSI sacrificed some of their special features found on their more expensive boards and instead kept the most important ones and hardly did any scaling down of things like connectivity on the board. I think that was the right choice. Optional software such as the command center, the MSI gaming app, as well as RAM disk can be neat little extras many users could enjoy. As for overclocking, I managed to overclock my Intel i7-6700K to 4.6 GHz at a voltage of 1.368 volts with this gaming M5. I mean that's a quite good result there, although 4.6 GHz were achievable at 1.344 volts with the M7. So although this gaming M5 clearly is not as good as its bigger brother, the M7, it does a remarkable job as well. The build quality is top notch here as well and performance wise not too much of a difference here. At a price point of $180 to $195, I'd say that's a good price performance ratio. MSI sets the bar high with their current generation motherboards. I'd definitely recommend the MSI Z170 A gaming M5 motherboard. Just like the M7, this M5 deserves my rare gold award as well, just in a different price range. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and visit my website to see videos there earlier than on YouTube.